Uses and misuses of statistics. The objective of the video is to introduce to you how statistics is being used and what are the common misuses of statistics. Why do we use statistical tools? We use these statistical tools for us to be able to describe the data, especially how the movement of the population is, uh, what the movement of the population is, how variable it is, or the, the presence of variability in the population. We'd also like to make comparisons of the data we're focusing in our study. We would also like to determine if there are relationships, especially with the variables we're studying, and testing hypotheses. That means we'd also like to make inferences about the population. And these are just the common things that we do, especially when we'd like to perform research or uh, just any study in general. However, there are also instances where statistics is being used to evoke something from, to, 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 to evoke feelings, specific feelings, out of um, the presented data. And it's done intentionally, perhaps because they'd like to manipulate. And these are often observed in real-life situations such as the following. So in this case, notice that notice how most of the ads are designed in a manner where they sometimes use statistics to appeal to the consumers, to the, the, the people they intended to buy. And this is some somewhat misleading. And most of this will be explained further later. So is this statistical appeal? Yes, this is a type of statistical appeal. And how are these things wrong in some cases? First of, statistics are, you know, made to... Uh, lie at some point. I would like to ask this type of questions where do numbers lie? I don't know if do numbers really lie, but in statistics, depending on the intention of how you're going to present these numbers, then maybe yes. So there's still um, an influence of the researcher. So for us to become good researchers and for us to understand better the reports, the statistical reports in certain studies, and of course become more educated consumers, then we should uh, be able to know when statistics are being, when some of the statistics are being misused. Let's start with suspect samples. So what do we mean by suspect samples? This is when we only use small samples, but then our interpretation seemed like it's made for a very large population. Notice, I don't know which one here would you think is larger. 2 or 20%? Let's take the scenario. You only interviewed 10 people. So, you could probably say that only two people preferred ice cream. However, it would be pres um, presented differently if you're going to say 20% of the population chose ice cream. But the reality is there are only two people who chose ice cream in that certain study. So, that is already a an example of a suspect sample because um, you're trying to draw general con general conclusions out of very small samples. And in statistics, we would prefer larger samples over very small samples, especially if your study is quantitative in nature. But if you prefer a qualitative type of study, it would be more effective for you to just simply use smaller population. Now, another example here. Three out of four doctors surveyed recommend brands such and such. Three out of four. 
if you understood this, it seemed like they have a hundred thousand. It's a ratio that in every four doctors, three choose the the said band. And if you convert this one to um, percentage, this could be 75%. But the question is, are there really more samples or are we just referring to only four doctors here? Because if that's the case, then we are dealing with suspect samples. It seemed like it represents the population, but it's really not. So you have to be, to be careful on this one. Next, ambiguous averages. So this is when we use the mean, median, mode, mid-ranges, Depending on what suits better for us as researchers, if what we'd like to, we, we would choose the result that supports our claim better. So if we're trying to claim that our study is very good, then we have to show it through numbers. Because in a way, research is um, defined, uh, is presenting results via evidence. So if we can further, um, make your your conclusions better by choosing the better average then it, what you're doing is ambiguous average suppose these are the averages in your study these are the results of your study if you refer to the mean you have 10 if you refer to the median there is 13 mode 7 mid range is 16. and for context um, the higher the number, the better the result. So if that's the case, which would be your ideal choice if what if you would like to present your report as or in your research as something valuable, you would probably choose the mid ranges because it has the highest number among four choices. So this alone is already as a statement that what we're doing is using averages in its ambiguous manner. So we don't want that to happen. Next, changing the subject. So what do we mean by changing the subject? So notice here in the, the image, you're just basically reporting on the same thing. They are of the same weight. A pound of cotton or a pound of gold. Now, if this is your concept, for instance, um, there are two opposing candidates in the election. Candidate A said that um, he spent in his entire career six hundred thousand on um, help on helping other people let's just say so one presented it six hundred thousand and then here comes candidate b who said that i presented it i, I helped pe three percent of people in my entire journey as your whatever candidate you're running for so if you compare six Hundred thousand and three percent, three six hundred thousand is largely, it's a large amount in comparison to three percent. Is you know it's, it's large, but not that large as to what the image is presented when we compare six hundred thousand and three percent together. But the reality is, six hundred thousand is just. 3% of that certain thing they're speaking of. So you're simply uh, representing the number in a different manner to suit your interests still. So that's changing the subject, even if you're just talking about the same thing. Next, we have detached statistics. So the meaning of detached statistics is there's no comparison really that is being made. For instance, you claim that your brand of cracker is uh, one has one third fewer calories. What is your comparison? Is it your previous formulation or is it other cracker company? 
None really, but it seemed like you're, you're using statistics here and since there is that statistical appeal, then you would feel that, oh, okay, one third, good. But not really because there's no certain comparison. The only way to do so is when you can um, present side by side the formulation of these scackers, for instance, or other things you're doing. So, very detached statistics. Next, implied connections. So, implied connections are done when we seem like there is a conclusion but not really a play in words. For instance, these are examples of implied statistics. Eating fish may help to reduce your cholesterol. Studies suggest that using our exercise machine will reduce your weight. Taking calcium, calcium will lower blood pressure in some people. So what do you think are the words that would tell you that these statements are implied? These are certain words that would actually let us know that this is trying to um, just allow the readers, just allow those who are uh, referring to this information, make their own conclusions, assuming that they are correct. But what really is happening here is just implied connections. Misleading graphs. We often use graphs to present our data sets in the absence of words and oftentimes when the result of a study is being reported or a result of research what reaches the majority of people who are not into research is just the graph or the final result and sometimes again if the intention is to evoke something else from the report and the likes we would like to you know use the power of the graph for instance, uh, on the left side, we have here the uh, two bar graphs. Uh, we would say that in this side, there is a very big gap between A, B, and C, uh, among A, B, and C, rather. But the reality is, this is, yes, there is a gap, but not that much of a gap. What happened here is that the graphing started from the middlemost value. This is to emphasize the graph, but not really to just, not really to present the idea of the graph. To just simply make your own conclusions of the graph, which is better. So of course, in terms of number, we have group A, or, and then we have group B, C as die. But if you would like to insist that there is really a big difference, then you would probably use the left graph here, which is quite misleading. And there are other misleading graphs about it. On the other side here, we have the comparison of heights and the way it's being presented. It's like it's a aesthetically pleasing, but um, what we're trying to show here is that instead of simply um, we 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 start to to imagine that um, if this is our comparison, Philippines would be a dwarf against the Netherlands, but it's just really a matter of centimeters, twenty five centimeters, one foot of a difference. But how it's being presented, it seemed like we're dwarfs against giants of the Netherlands. So this is still a misleading graph. Faulty survey questions. Um, these are questions like you're not given a lot of options, whether it's just simply a answer yes and no, which is good at some point because you know you don't want to be subjected to many other options, especially if you're fickle minded. But in research, freedom of selection of your answers would be highly welcome because we have, you know, varying points to um, share. For instance, we have the following questions. Which do you think 
is the better worded question. Is it the first one where it asks it asks what um you feel about Barangay One Two Three building a new gymnasium? So do you feel that Barangay One Two Three should build a new gymnasium? It's like yes or no. The other question is do you favor increasing taxes so that the Barangay One Two Three can build a new football stadium? You favor so this could have yes or no question, but the wording of the question is more specific. Hence, it's the better option as compared to the first question. It's because you know why you will answer yes or no. There's a reason here. Increasing taxes in comparison to the other one where um, it's just a matter of preference at some point. So make our questionnaires more uh, not something that will just simply be answered in its most monochromatic answer. Seems like we're, as a person, you're very detached of, of emotions and other aspects that. Uh, um, that you should be allowing any human individual. Next. Uh, I think that would be it. There are seven um, misuses of statistics. So we, we can become more um, informed consumers that yes, numbers can be made to make us feel something it is for us to feel bad for us to be wary of for us to be more careful about but at the end of the day it's still in the you know prerogative of the researcher to simply share informations according to intentions but hopefully that's not how we do our researchers and hopefully also when we read informations that involve statistics we are better informed and as consumers, we are better consumers at the end of the day because all these informations, researches, for instance, or studies are done to better our lives. But then if it's done because of certain intentions, then um, we might be presenting ourselves the danger at some point, believing that this and this are true which is not really, and because and there's numbers presented there, um, then we will just simply believe all those things, and that would be very sad. So hopefully, hopefully we can become better as researchers and as consumers. Thank you.